morning students so today we are going to start the second module and that is first lecture of this module understanding of climate change if you remember in the previous lecture we had uh, briefly touched upon the concept of climate change we have learned in the past that climate change is a burning issue which the entire world is facing right now climate change global warming these are or these are all basically trigger points which led to introduction of various environmental laws and policies which led to framing of uh, several conventions protocols for protection of mankind habitat flora fauna and for minimizing and curtailment of climate change and global warming so this particular module is named sustainable development and environment sustainable development is such a development which optim which basically use optimum amount of resources which exploits optimum quantity of resources keeping provision for futuristic use and keeping provision for future generations so today first we will study about climate change somewhat in details we will study about climate change so climate change describes a significant and lasting shift in earth's weather patterns and average temperature over an extended period so let me ask you an important and interesting question do you know what is the difference between weather and the climate i am sure most of you must be of the opinion that they are almost same thing but let me tell you students they are not same weather is basically what we see on day to day basis okay the atmospheric conditions it may be uh, it may be totally sunny in the morning it may be uh, raining very uh, very uh, raining heavily okay it may be a heavy rainfall okay uh, prone maybe afternoon and maybe a somewhat chilled evening in the same day so what i described in the morning it was sunny too hot in the afternoon it rained cats and dogs okay and in the evening suppose air was blowing and it was a chilled evening okay so in the same day three kind of weather was observed hot sunny weather in the morning rainy type of weather in the afternoon and then a colder weather in the evening but can we say that about climate no climate is basically uh, the conditions of atmosphere prevalent in any region in a period of say 35 years okay 30 to 35 years such a prolonged time means all the weather patterns all the individual weather patterns accumulated over a period of 30 to 35 years accounts for a climate so climate is a long term phenomenon whereas weather is ever changing short term extremely short term phenomenon of atmospheric conditions okay so now climate change that means just imagine on what extent things must have gone wrong that climate is being changed right it may be that due to today's pollution uh, weather or temperature of today or tomorrow increased but on what basis we have wronged ourselves we the human beings due to anthropogenic activities on what basis we have wronged ourselves that the climate which is a prolonged phenomenon of 30 to 35 years just imagine it has started changing or it has changed it has changed drastically so how much uh, 
harm we have already caused to uh, mother earth mother nature okay that climate has changed and that is why it has to be addressed that is why it has to be taken care of it's very 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 much uh, necessary so climate change describes a significant and lasting shift in earth's weather patterns and average temperature over an extended period the primary culprits are human activities i've told you students no species other than homo sapiens human beings okay particularly human beings other than human beings no other species in the atmosphere in the environment harm the environment okay but only the human beings due to their aspirations due to their developmental aspirations as well as particularly due to their greed have wronged have caused lot of change in the environment all the anthropogenic activities over exploitation of the resources reckless or total uh, maybe i can use the word uh, ignorance or just uh, just underestimating or just avoiding the environmental protocols environmental rules and regulations which have been set which have come into effect from a long time now so due to not complying due to non compliance of the activities with the standards set for those activities we have caused so much damage to the environment to the atmosphere okay so primary culprits are the human activities that produce greenhouse gases greenhouse gases what are those those are basically carbon dioxide methane water vapor okay these are all greenhouse gases which primarily trap the heat from the sun but due to over production due to large scale production of greenhouse gases what happens basically is that uh, uh, the lot of heat is being trapped global warming is increasing okay so the primary culprits are human activities that produce greenhouse gases with energy productions industrial processes deforestation and agricultural agriculture leading the charge profoundly influencing our planet's environment so key greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide from an insulating layer in the atmosphere trapping heat and resulting in a warming effect known as global warming so greenhouse effect is the primary version okay and the extended harmful version of the greenhouse effect is global warming means what is required is basically greenhouse effect what is not at all required is the global warming why because those greenhouse gases they are concentrating in the atmosphere to such a large extent that they are trapping lot of heat from the sun if the greenhouse gases would not have been there there the temperature of earth would have been very very cold totally not at, not suitable for survival but due to availability of the greenhouse gases means which were a blessing a boon uh, heat from sun was being trapped and temperature of earth was being regulated it was being maintained at a very conducive level but due to over generation over production of the greenhouse gases the heat uh, rather to say excessive heat from the sun is basically causing lot of increase in the temperature and a prolonged average temperature of earth is also increasing and which is expected to cause lots of devastation one day if it is not taken care of right now so the primary culprits are human activities that produce the greenhouse gases with energy productions industrial processes deforestations and agriculture leading the charge profoundly influencing our planet's environment so the key greenhouse gases carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide water vapor okay 
they all form an insulating layer in the atmosphere trapping heat and resulting in a warming effect known as global warming so that is why it is called global warming it is not restricted to any region any state any particular country it's global okay all the countries are getting affected by it so this selection delves into the science of these gases their sources and the role they play in the current climate crisis that we are facing so next is understanding the key climate concepts so basically there are two key climate concepts greenhouse effect and global warming let me give you an example of greenhouse effect in day to day life suppose if you have parked your car outside okay on a summer morning and you have also closed all the windows of the car okay the front windows the rear windows you have closed and you have just locked the car and you have kept it in the morning sunny morning for say one hour or one and a half hour after one hour and when you were leaving the car it was normal temperature inside the car okay it was not uncomfortable but after you have parked the car locked the car and kept it in the sunny morning okay exposed to sun for one hour or one and a half hour when you come back you sit inside the car and you feel it so so hot right it's very uncomfortable why is that that is because the heat from the outside okay the sun rays the heat from the sun they were entering into the inside of the car through the windows but the windows trapped the heat okay windows cannot trap the light it's not that when you will enter into the light and as i beg your pardon when you will, you will enter into the car and you will see that the light has been trapped it's not that but the heat from that light from the sun it is trapped it is trapped inside okay initially if you had uh, suppose in that same morning before parking the car in the sun suppose you, if you had operated air conditioner if you had just switched on the ac and suppose it would have been cold inside comfortably cold inside the uh, car after one hour when you enter into the same car after having parked it in the sun for one hour you feel so hot so un uncomfortable right so where did that that uh, coldness go okay where did that low temperature go why it became so hot because initially the heat was trapped and it went on increasing okay and that is why the temperature increased so much that it became uncomfortable okay now immediately you do one thing you open all the windows what will happen you will get a much much relief from the intense heat that was initially inside the car why that happens because the heat trapped inside the car now escaped into the atmosphere even if you start ac inside that hot car you will not get relief for at least 5 to 10 minutes okay unless the ac cools down everything but you open the windows and you will get instant relief from that scorching heat inside the car i am not saying that you will get the same effect as ac would have done after being on for 5 to 10 minutes but you will get a respite from the intense heat so that is basically students the greenhouse effect S similar to what the mirrors i beg your pardon the windows the glasses in the windows did to the sunlight the heat from the light similar effect is done by carbon dioxide water vapor methane nitrous oxide with the heat from the sun they trap the heat from the sun and they maintain somewhat a regulated hot temperature in the ambience of atmosphere near the earth surface and that is why we can survive 
if greenhouse gases would not have been there our earth would have been much much colder and it would have been very difficult to survive in that particular kind of thing okay so greenhouse effect was a blessing in disguise but global warming and which was triggered by sheer human activities anthropogenic activities they pose a serious threat to the existence of everything not only mankind but flora fauna everything because you imagine that one day temperature of earth rises to okay around uh, 80 degree centigrade how you will survive how all of us will survive there will be no vegetation there will be animals will die okay and if we can take shelter we can build that kind of uh, conditions where that heat from the sun will not reach directly to us but can we survive without food chain food web everything is being destroy, uh, destroyed we will also not survive so that is why and also i have told you that due to intense heating of our surface due to global warming one day it might be possible that a large scale devastation due to flooding due to melting of glaciers and snow mountains it might take place if you have seen the movie 2012 2012 somewhat it was depicted in that movie so greenhouse effect is a natural process that warms the earth surface human activities have amplified this warming by increasing the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere global warming refers to earth's rising surface temperature resulting from enhanced greenhouse gas concentrations the uneven rate of warming is transforming a climate worldwide presenting a host of environmental and social challenges so due to increase in global warming due to increase in average temperature of earth it caused lot of inconvenience lot of discomfort and lot of survival related issues to the entire flora fauna of the ecosystem now climate change impact on weather now by this time i think you must have understood the concept of weather and climate weather is a short term phenomenon okay but climate is a long term phenomenon okay so what is the impact of climate change on weather the title is very interesting right it sounds so interesting climate change impact on weather so what are the impacts the first impact is altering weather patterns with climate change we are experiencing a shift in weather phenomena okay the intensity and frequency of heat wave ascents dramatically altering precipitation patterns and escalating the occurrence of extreme weather events you must have noticed students that those areas where it used to rain rarely where it used to be very scanty rainfall now we hear that those areas are facing flood for example last year also in 2023 perhaps if i am not wrong rajasthan few areas of rajasthan were facing flood or flood like situation so it was unimaginable that in such a dry arid thar region flood would occur but it's happening then switzerland i think i have mentioned this example before also switzerland the london okay even france they are experiencing heat waves they are experiencing hot scorching sun and a high temperature temperature as high as 47 48 degree centigrade just imagine they have never witnessed that they have never seen that and that is why uh, it's very very uncomfortable for them to survive in that kind of harsh condition of weather then the average precipitation that used to that a region used to experience that is also very very erratic very very fluctuating either it doesn't rain or it rains heavily so both the situations are troublesome so these are basically uh, why they are occurring they are occurring due to that climate change 
the intensity and frequency of heat wave crescents dramatically altering precipitation patterns and escalating the occurrence of uh, extreme weather events extreme weather events when it's raining it's raining heavily heavily flood like situation when it it, it is a colder type of uh, weather okay or suppose if in winter season it's extreme cold broke records of past 20 years 30 years maybe 40 years when it's hot summer season it it creates a new record maybe this much high temperature never was achieved in the past so that is known as extreme weather events then sea level rise now this is a trouble situation students sea level rise rise in the sea level is occurring okay a direct threat to coastal habitats a consequence of melting polar ice and expanded sea water caused by global warming so the sea level is rising if the average sea level rises many coastal areas okay and people flora and fauna residing near the coastal areas they are going to be displaced they are going to be uh, severely affected okay particularly human beings can shift they can adapt in new situation but what about the animals what about the plants okay which used to survive on a particular kind of coastal situation now coastal area has got got submerged into water okay human being can shift but it will be very difficult for them to shift and survive okay then ocean acidification the elevated carbon dioxide levels are not just warming our planet but also acidifying our oceans with far reaching effects on marine ecosystem especially on organisms so basically one more dangerous thing is happening that is acidification of the oceans and you know extreme acidity or extreme basicity or alkalinity is not at all good right so the ocean waters are getting acidified and just you imagine if they get acidified how the aquatic organisms and the people who people means all the flora fauna who are dependent on that ocean how they are going to survive so big question and a big dilemma then biodiversity at risk you know students due to this climate change due to this erratic weather extreme erratic weather conditions who are the stakeholders all the flora fauna human beings everything we are the stakeholders we are at risk so biodiversity decline because people cannot survive the species cannot survive the birds and plants cannot survive that harsh uh, condition which they have never ever witnessed experienced in the past so biodiversity decline habitat destruction coupled with climate shifts threatens our planet's diverse species by altering their natural ecosystem which can lead to devastating biodiversity loss mitigation efforts you know it takes a whole lot lots of efforts to mitigate climate change okay but this increasing greenhouse effect due to its global warming it it gives a great it causes a great setback for the, those efforts okay encouraging renewable energy options and the conservation of natural forests so mitigating climate change requires a concerted reduction of greenhouse gases encouraging renewable of energy options and the of conservation of the natural forests then adaptive responses adapting to climate change entails adjusting our socio economic practices to minimize the harm promoting the resilience of both human and environmental systems so adaptive responses basically refers to adapting to climate change which ensures adjusting socio economical practices to minimize the harm promoting the resilience of both human and environmental systems now the importance of global collaboration so why participation from each and every country is required for global collaboration to explain this thing i'll give you one more example suppose
we are trapped in an enormous tank okay <coughs> or suppose we are floating on a boat <coughs> there are several holes in the boat and we are floating in the boat in a long long boat or in a large ship in in a sea or ocean there are several holes some people are closing the holes okay some people are again opening the closed holes so can we survive in that ship for long no how can we survive if everyone makes concerted effort to close the holes and also throw away the water that has entered into the ship but if few people try to close the holes and throw water and more people try to make new holes into the ship and also let water come into the enter into the ship what will happen ultimately the ship will sink now you you just imagine that the ship is our earth and uh, environment and few people who were closing the holes are those human beings environmentalist those who are trying to protect the environment and the larger section of people who are basically creating more and more pollution and not abiding by rules and regulations they are those people who are again creating new holes into the ship and letting ship sink so when it will collapse all of us will collapse right that is why concerted effort from everyone is required involvement of all the individuals regions places states countries is required for tackling the issue of global warming and climate change so that is why several international agreements have been done kyoto protocols have been signed montreal protocols have been signed paris agreement was made okay then empowering local actions crucial to global fight are local initiatives where individual and communities champion sustainable living leading to reduced carbon emissions and encouraging ground level advocacy for policy reforms so basically it's a involvement it's a must must involvement for everyone if these enemies have to be taken care of if they have to be eliminated then why study climate change what is the need for studying of climate change so we have learned so far what is the or what are the causes of climate change all the anthropogenic activities okay all the non compliances with the standards all the over exploitation of resources they are basically causing uh, climate change so what are the impacts they cause they are assessing they are affecting the climate okay in such a way that they are causing threat to the ecosystem to agricultural production human health and all so predicting and influencing the future so what can be said keeping in mind the current scenario what can be said about the future so basically it has been predicted that through scientific means only that the glaciers may melt down the oceans in the mountains may melt down okay the te overall temperature of earth may be increased to a such a extent that it will be difficult for everyone to survive okay more more extreme erratic weather situation and extreme changed and non conducive climate can be witnessed in future if strong concrete steps are not adopted and everyone's involvement is not there in that process so this is basically predicting and influencing the future now strategies for climate resilience so basically uh, we have discussed in the past also in order to tackle the climate change in order to do away with the climate change we have to reduce the production of greenhouse gases we have to basically regulate the industries factories power plants and all which uh, release lot of greenhouse gases which pollute the rivers oceans uh, seas water bodies okay we have to get rid of the extreme grid of cutting forest okay of cutting mountains cutting plateaus over 
development and over exploitation of natural resources should be avoided okay we have to take care of the endangered species just like hunting of wild animals should be totally prohibited people kill lion people keep kill elephants for their tusk people kill uh, rhinos for their horns okay one horn rhinoceros so these things have to be totally taken care of then only climate change can be resisted okay and the ripple effect of awareness and innovation you know ripples ripples are basically created in water maybe in river in a pond when you throw a stone into the water body the point where the stone hits and enter into the water body you will see large circles okay large concentric circles one circle above that one more circle or maybe say a very large circle inside that one smaller circle then one smaller circle very near to the place where the stone hit the effect will be strong and then it will vein away but it will it propagates basically okay the point where the stone hits the water body from there it propagates and it goes outside similarly ripple effect of awareness is that basically when few people are sensitized 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 and educated they further convey to few more people and in this way the ripple effect is if observed okay so investments climate research stimulates technology advancement and infrastructure innovation attracting investment in green sectors vital for sustainable climate future okay so basically students everyone's involvement has to be there people have to be educated and this knowledge has to be propagated not only to the current generation was but also to the future generations and then only this can be taken care of so that's all for lecture one of this particular module we will meet in the next class and we'll continue second lecture of this particular module for sustainable development and environment so thank you so much take care and bye